What's more important to the success of a team? Is it the talent of the individual team members or is it the ability of the team members to work together as a team to achieve success? In this video, I'm gonna tell you the answer to that question. Hi everybody, this is Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com. This is a channel where I teach you about communication skills so you can improve your relationships, succeed at work, and be more confident. Today's video is not about communication skills per se, it's about a branch of the communication sciences that many people may not even realize is part of communication, and that is the study of social networks, the study of nodes and connections. These nodes can be people, they can be machines, they can be companies, uh, and the connections can be things like friendship or customer relationships or machines sending messages to one another. The nodes can be almost anything and the connections can, and the connections can be almost anything. But in the study of social networks where the nodes are people and the connections are friendship relationships or communication linkages between people, there's an enormous and burgeoning scientific discipline that involves the study of these social networks. And this scientific discipline takes place mostly within departments of communication or within the discipline of communication, although it also takes place in computer science and engineering and information science and a variety of other places. But today I wanted to talk to you about a really interesting study of social networks that was written by my friend and colleague, Noshir Contractor and his colleagues, and it's about the relationship between individual talent, team experience, and the success of a team. As I said at the top of the video, there's an age old question, which is when you're putting a team together, what's more important, the talent of the individual team members or the, the ability of the team members to work together as a team? I think we intuitively and correctly believe that both are important, both the individual talent of the team members and their ability to work cooperatively together. But the question is, what's the magnitude of the importance of each of those factors? And can the ability to work together as a team contribute to a team's success over and above the talent of the individual team members? That's the question that this paper attempts to answer. The paper I wanna talk about today is called Prior Shared Success Predicts Victory in Team Competitions, and it was just published in the journal Nature Human Behavior. The authors analyzed Indian Premier League cricket, European Premier League soccer, Major League Baseball, NBA basketball, and an online game called Defense of the Ancients. They used online sources to gather a whole bunch of statistics, basically 12 years or so of statistics from about, or 11 years of statistics from 2002 to 2013 that they skimmed from the internet. And they looked at the individual statistics of all the players on these teams. And then they looked at the team statistics and especially the history that these players had of winning together. And they were trying to determine, did prior shared success predict success by the team? So there are two main kinds of variables in this analysis. The first had to do with individual talent. So for individual talent, they just looked at the individual statistics for each of these sports. And the individual statistics vary from sport to sport, but in Major League Baseball, they would be something like a batting average or on-base plus slugging percentage or wins against replacement. These are all arcane baseball statistics if you don't know very much about baseball. For NBA basketball, they might have picked points per game or assists per game, the traditional individual statistics. And I don't know enough about cricket uh, or soccer necessarily to know what individual statistics or defense of the ancients. But in each of these games, there are individual statistics that are compiled on the internet. And they went around and scraped all these data from the internet in order to compile the individual talent statistics for this analysis. But I think the more interesting thing was what they did for team success or what they called shared prior success. They define shared prior success as two team members playing together in a game where they were victorious. So for any given team, they could compute the average individual statistics by taking the individual statistics of each player and averaging them. And then they could compute the average shared prior success by taking every pair of players on the team and seeing how many previous victories had, they, had those two players had together on the same team. And in this way, they had a team statistic, like how well the players play together and how much prior success that they had, and they had an individual set of statistics. And then what the analysis did is see which of those statistics 
did a better job at predicting victories in a separate season. So in any social network analysis, you have, as I said, nodes and links. And I'm gonna put a figure up on the screen that comes from this paper, which shows the nodes, which are individual team members, and the links, which are the, the number of times these two players have been together when the team won the game. So the, 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 the stronger the links, the darker the links, it means the, the higher number of previous victories between those two team members. And the darker the nodes means the, the greater the individual talent of the team members. So in any social network analysis, you have nodes and links, and the nodes mean you know people or teams or computers or whatever, and the links are the relationships between the nodes. So if you check out that figure, you'll see how that's illustrated in this particular paper. So they gathered these statistics for 11 seasons, and they used that data to predict the success of the team in the 12th season, for which they also had collected data from the internet. So what did they find? It turns out, perhaps not surprisingly, that individual talent was the strongest overall predictor of a team's success uh, across all these different kinds of competitive sports and games. So talent matters. I guess we shouldn't be surprised by that. But interestingly, and the main point of this paper was that this prior shared success, the number of times that two players had been together during a previous victory, and the average of that across the whole team, contributed significant unique amount of predictive ability above and beyond the talent of the individual players. So what does this mean? It means that if you're constructing a team, it's best to get the most talented team members you possibly can. But when all things are equal, that is when teams are relatively evenly matched in terms of talent, as they often are in a competitive marketplace, because in a competitive marketplace for talent, the, the amount of talent in one organization or team or another tends to even out as, as a function of the effects of competition. So in an otherwise equally balanced market for talent, when two teams have relatively equal talent, what makes a difference is the prior shared success. And this is because prior shared success teaches people how to work together, gives them the confidence to work together, helps them organize their activities. And so team, the ability to work collaboratively as a team is important to the success of a team over and above the individual talents of any one team member. I thought this was an interesting thing to uh, talk about on the channel, and I thought it was an especially interesting application of the technology and theories of social network analysis, which is a big but relatively unknown part of the study of communication. So talent matters most. It explains between about 7% and 24% of the variation in team performance in a given season. Whereas prior shared success, this team ability to play as a team, explained only between one and about 15%. So talent matters most, but the ability to work as a team contributes something above and beyond the individual talent of the, of the team members. I'll link to the paper below in the description. It may be behind a paywall. I'm not sure if it is, I'm sorry. If you really wanna see this paper, you can contact me by email and I'll send you a copy of it. I hope you like this brief video about social network analysis as it applies to team sports and the success at team sports. If you like this kind of video, click the like button, click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so YouTube notifies you next time I upload a video. And go on over to howcommunicationworks.com, our website, where you can download an ebook about empathy if you sign up for our mailing list. And check out the blog. I've written lots of long articles about communication skills and all the different ways that you can use communication to be more successful in your personal and professional lives and be more confident. Thanks so much for checking in with us today. We'll see you next time.